Before we get into the video, I need to talk to you guys about some new LUTs that I have put on my digital store. I have some new C200 LUTs that I have been working on, as well as a new LUT for the Canon R5. It is a basic standard log, Canon log to Rec. 709 that I personally feel works and gives a better looking image than the standard Canon LUT that Canon provides. So, and it gives a more neutral look that is easier to match cameras with. It is built designed for that, in which you can use more creative looks to sort of get that, that look that you want. So definitely check out the digital store, but enough talking, let's get on to the video. What is up everybody? James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if you do like the content here, please make sure to leave a like. The likes absolutely help out. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can stay up to date with all my content here. Also, you can check out my Patreon page as I do drop some exclusive content there, as well as early access and entry to the content. So feel free to check that out. Okay. So I noticed that all of all the videos I dropped during Blackmagic's live stream on Resolve 17, the video that covered the cut page and specifically their brand new speed editor console, this was the one that for some reason blew up out of nowhere. Uh, I'm really not gonna lie to you guys. I was really caught off guard by that. I was sh completely shocked and surprised as to why this was getting so much attention. And as I scurried around YouTube, I started to kind of see why. Uh, I think many of you guys are really interested in this update and the nude speed panel, as you are probably thinking, similar to me, that this could be a genuine game changer in terms of editing content on the go and quick turnarounds, which obviously is becoming more common with people looking to create uh, more content to ramp up businesses. However, at the time of this recording, there are not that many people talking about the cut page and even fewer on the speed editor console. Uh, so I guess you guys saw that as one of the only sources. I also know you guys made it very, very clear that you were not happy with the audio blending of my mic, as well as the audio coming from the Black Magic's presentation. And yes, I will happily admit that I could have done the, uh, the job of the audio mixing a lot better, and I do apologize for that. So to make it up to you guys, I am giving you a highlight coverage of the cut page and why you guys may possibly want to seriously consider the new speed editor console. Let's start off with some of the highlight features that are specifically to the cut page that I am really excited about. The first, albeit, is not specific to the cut page, but is still very important. And that is, you now have the ability to edit the duration of a source clip before you drop it into the timeline. Meaning, you can now add a specific duration into the source time code, and it will drop the duration of the clip into the timeline. This is great because you now know, if you want to say five seconds of B-roll, you could just put five seconds, and it will drop the exact time frame into the timeline. Now, the next big update is the fact that they now have a dedicated audio trimming button on the cut page. So now you can trim your clip based specifically on the audio track, which is great uh, for clearing up dead air. This was one of the things I was really missing in the cut page. And then finally, the big change is the media management in the source tape. Now, if you are not familiar with the cut page, the source tape was, fe was a feature that the source tape was the highlight feature that had the source monitor view all of your media in a single timeline. Now, when this first came out in Resolve 16, this seemed like a really cool idea. However, this got out of hand really quickly if you were working on projects with tons of video clips with dozens of scenes. And it could get pretty overwhelming. Well, now Blackmagic has added the ability to divide your source media into different categories, including based on scenes from the metadata. Basically, you can input scene information into the metadata, and with a click of a button, the source tape will create a bin based off of the scene information, giving you more organization and allowing you to work with one scene at a time. 
And all of this leads to what is probably the biggest surprise and excitement about the cut page, and that is their new hardware console, the Speed Editor. This is a console that is designed specifically for the cut page. Uh, however, it has no cables. It's operated via Bluetooth, and it, or you can operate it via USB, and it has internal batteries. The obvious big advantage of this is that it is completely cable free, making it easy to set up and basically get to work. This is going to be great because you don't have to worry about sacrificing a port that may be needed for a hard drive, as well as you can edit this say on like a plane without having any uh, cable sprouting everywhere. However, I do have one concern and that is um, the internal battery. Now, I am very curious to see how long this battery lasts as Blackmagic is not really known for their devices having long battery life. The last thing I would want is to be editing with a client and, a con and my console basically goes dead because of the battery life. However, I have faith in Blackmagic has considered this and put in a good, reliable battery solution into this uh, console. Now, the speed editor has a ton of basic editing needs with a click away. You can quickly create in and out points, drop preset transitions as you scroll through the timeline, or select a few of your favorite transitions of yours, which by the way, Blackmagic now has added a ton of well done transitions to pick from and just now all you have to do is just drop in your edits with a and with a click of the transition button and you can add it in. You can also change the duration of the transition with the speed editor and even set the duration of your preset and it will automatically apply it to any of your transitions going forward. This is huge. Uh, it's a huge time saver as one of the things that annoys me and slows me down is the constant going back and forth of changing the durations of transitions. But now I can only have to set it once and it will apply it to all future transitions in the timeline. You can also adjust the audio levels um, of a clip with a flick of the audio button, making normalizing your audio levels a breeze. However, the biggest thing about the speed editor is the multi-cam function. And let me tell you, this is probably what uh, I am most excited about this device. The first is the source override, where you drop your master or your main clip into the timeline, and as long as all your audio is synced, the speed editor will take your other media sources and place them in sync of your timeline based on the base timeline. So you can have your master shot of a talk show and with just uh, your, just setting your in and out points of your host camera, Resolve will automatically drop the cutaway to, of the host camera into the correct position of the timeline. So there's no need to try to find out the audio waves and try syncing them, in, uh, syncing them into the timeline. It's all done for you. And if you have any cameras synced via timecode, it makes the process even easier. The next multicam feature they revealed was the sync bin. Essentially, you get all of your synced camera angles at once in the, in the source tape and have each media clip assigned to a specific camera number. Therefore, you can view all your camera angles at once. So you can scroll along the timeline, decide which cutaway to add to the timeline, and then just drop it there. This feature alone will speed up post workflow as you can visually watch the whole scene all at once. But it doesn't stop there. Blackmagic still decides to take it to the next level with the live override. And it was here where I just lost it. It is essentially live editing in a post-production phase. All you have to do is hold the camera number you want and simply use the scroll wheel to add the media into the timeline. When you stop, you can switch to another camera source you like. You hold that camera source down and then use the scroll wheel again and it picks up right where you left off on, on the last source. This is perfect for mastering event productions as well as talk shows, podcasts, reality TV shows where you may have initially 
where you may initially give like a smaller size of the live edit cut of the project using say like the eight to mini switchers, but then going in the post with the original files from the cameras, you can edit a 4K master file as if you were live editing the scene again. Basically, this way you can cut out any sort of hiccups, any pauses, and basically give a good clean minutes. I can easily see this as a great tool to get wedding videos turned around incredibly quickly. But to top this all off, Blackmagic announced that this new speed editor will cost only 295 US dollars, which on that alone feels like highway robbery. But if you buy the new Resolve 17 Studio, then they're going to give you the speed editor free of charge. Which, if you are someone like me, who already has Resolve Studio, 17 is a free upgrade anyway. Therefore, I can buy the Resolve 17 Studio dongle, get the speed editor, and then resell for the same price. Therefore, I'm getting an entire console free of charge. Blackmagic has done it again continuing to push the boundaries of what can be done in the film industry, and I could not be happier for it. I already ordered my speed editor, but probably won't come until like the end of the year, but we shall see. And I'll definitely put out videos once it comes in. But in the meantime, if you have more questions regarding either the cut page or the video editor, please uh, let me know in the comments, and also make sure to hit the like buttons and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed because I know a lot of you are not. So subscribe to the channel and as always, until next time, take care everyone.